Hi, my name is Dan Clark. I'm the founder and headmaster of Mr. Speakers. We manufacture high-performance, affordable headphones. And we've been doing that for about two years now. Uh, we started the company with the express goal of delivering very high-quality headphones, but using a modern internet-based distribution paradigm to be able to keep prices down and make our products available to people who normally wouldn't be able to buy high-end headphones. We began a process of designing a new enclosure to improve the performance of the headphone, and we naturally used 3D printing to be able to do that. As we started working with the 3D printers, we realized that we were getting sonic results that were better than we expected simply based on the geometry of the enclosures we were working on. So we began to research why the sound was better than we expected. And what we discovered was that the 3D printing allowed us to um, basically create structures that were different acoustically and physically than you would get through in injection molding. And as we began to realize that the way 3D printers worked was actually changing the sound, we began to iterate and modify our designs to take advantage of the way 3D printers work to improve the audio quality of the product. And that's when we made the decision to switch from using 3D printing as a prototyping platform to actually seeing if we could productize it and use it for manufacturing finished goods. Uh, as probably most people who will be watching this know, uh, 3D printing produces parts that are not aesthetically beautiful. They'll look like a plastic piece with a lot of lines and striations in it. And the big question is, when you're manufacturing something like a, a high quality headphone is, how can you actually, A, produce those in volume because most 3D printers are fairly slow, and B, how can you make it look like a really nice product? And those were really difficult questions to answer and took a lot of our energy actually figuring out how to resolve those two uh, questions. So as you can see, what we've done here is created a cabinet that allows us to store all of the printers in one convenient space. And that works really well for a couple of reasons. One of them is that we actually have a forced air system that pulls air through the cabinet, keeps it at a constant temperature so that the print quality is really consistent. And it's also filtering the air as it leaves the cabinet so that we don't have any particulates being vented into the room while the printers are actually printing. Getting started with 3D printing was, for production of a consumer good product was very difficult. Um, in part because we didn't have any references to draw from from other people who'd actually done it. To this day, I'm aware of only one other consumer product that actually is made in full, you know, its full finished good state is manufactured on 3D printers. What we have here is a very high quality filament. It's the premium filament from Affinia. We've noticed that the filament has a big effect on the quality of the part, not only in its, it, the part itself, but also your ability to release it from the support structure and raft. So the uh, colors that we found to be most effective from the Affinia Premium line have been the white and the black material. Other colors such as red and blue were more problematic in terms of being able to separate the parts from the support material uh, and or didn't give us as nice a surface to work with. So we've been very happy with those two uh, materials in particular. The other thing is that we use a high melt point plastic which we feel gives us better results. Uh, so instead of using like a 240 degree centigrade uh, melting filament. I think this is closer to 270 degrees centigrade. The first review that we got was actually on HeadFi, which is the world's largest organization for uh, headphone enthusiasts online. I shouldn't call it an organization. It's the largest website. There are almost 1.3 million people a month who visit um, HeadFi. And the founder of HeadFi gave a very enthusiastic review to the Alpha Dog when it came out. Um, basically introducing it to the community as his favorite fully closed headphone. We won awards from Six Moons, which gave us a, a Blue Moon Award that basically saying this is a fantastic value as a product. Uh, we also won a Writer's Choice Award from Positive Feedback Pub 
uh, positive feedback publication uh, from Michael Mercer and I think several of the other journalists there who agreed that this was uh, worthy of one of their awards for 2013. We've also been uh, reviewed by uh, Headphonia, which called the product a masterpiece, and uh, have a number of reviews coming up from other mainstream and also uh, headphone-oriented audio publications. So as the parts come off the printer, they have this finish to them, which is uh, shows the different paths that the print head took in laying down the ink, and it's very visible what the fabrication process was. Obviously, especially for the exterior facing components, we can't have that because that's not going to be aesthetically acceptable to a customer. So the first thing that we do in our fabrication process is we chemically treat the cups to essentially fuse all the different lines together and that makes the part harder and more rigid. Uh, it also makes a better working surface for us to then uh, sand and prep and paint. And to get to the quality that we'd like, we actually end up using a five-step automotive paint process where we're laying down a primer, two coats of paint. In reality, it's more like three or four thin coats. And then uh, also two to four coats of clear coat on top of that which is then sanded, polished, and polished again in order to be able to make the final product. I think the most important advice I can give for people considering actually manufacturing with 3D printers is you have to have a performance reason to do it. Now, performance can mean different things. Performance could mean it lets your product technically do something better, like in our case, we were able to design a cup that has less cup sound to it than conventional technologies allowed. Uh, or perhaps it's something that lets you create a structure that serves a functional purpose that you couldn't manufacture with other tools. Uh, but if you don't have those reasons to do it, it's not the right way to bring products to market. Just saving on tooling costs and stuff isn't sufficient because the complexities of creating something that's going to be beautiful and pleasing and can be produced in reasonable quantities, uh, the technology is not there yet. In our instance, we have a headphone that sells for $600, which gives us the ability to invest the time and resources to make the product beautiful. To hear more from Dan Clark and others, go to the3dprintingsummit.com for more information. This year's Summit and Expo takes place in Pittsburgh, September 16th through 18th. With six different tracks and over 50 presentations, you are going to find what fits you best. Again, for more information, go to the3dprintingsummit.com so you can find out how you can attend and learn more from other 3D printers like you.